have two parallel conducting rods that are connected by a resistor between the two of them, we have a constant magnetic field, which is what direction class? Into the bore. And we are going to apply a force to the right. We push to the right. What happens? This object is moving to the right now. What happens? Um, it's going to be induced current. Which direction? Counterclockwise, okay. You take your, your fingers pointing in the direction of the velocity because it's to be moving to the right. Michael, how you doing? Don't you worry, I have a lab table for you. Right over there, go stand. Take yourself, go stand. It's okay. I'm not hurt. You just had your eyes closed. That's not good. You're not learning that way. The velocity is to the right. Curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb points up. Positive charges will be moving upward. So we will have current upward. Now that we have current upward, we can point our fingers in the direction of the current. Fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Our thumb is going to point to the left. What is to the left, class? Class, what's to the left? Don't be distracted. Costa is not going to distract you. This is to the left. This is Costa is going to the left. Yes, Costa, what's up? When there's a moment, could I see Tim change? There's never a moment, Tim. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. We have then a magnetic force which is to the left current. Now, Let's look at this in a slightly different way. Let's look at, look at it in terms of Lenz's law. Let's say we know the magnetic field is what direction, class? Into the board. As this object is moving to the right, what's happening to the magnetic flux into the board? It's increasing. Therefore, according to Lenz's law, there is a resistance to that change. Therefore, there's an induced magnetic field what direction? Out of the board. Therefore, if you take your fingers and you point your fingers in the direction of the induced magnetic field, you will get a current which is counterclockwise. No, gets you the exact same thing. It's just two different ways of looking at it. Okay, let's go through and figure out the EMF, the motional EMF here. But we're going to do it in terms of the negative of the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. We usually do it the other way. We're going to do it this way this time. Nittish, magnetic flux. Equal to BA cosine. Okay, so we have the negative of the derivative of BA cosine theta. Okay, let's see. Um, Loki, the magnetic field as it changes as a function of time. I'm sorry, the word taking the derivative, I'm trying to figure out what we can take out from underneath oh, the integral here, or underneath the B is constant. B is constant, so we have B. Does the area change? Yes. Yes, what about theta? No. No, okay. So we have negative uh, cosine theta, derivative of the area as a function of time. Uh, let's see, oh, I do want to highlight because this um, mistake was made several times on the test. This right here is the equation on your equation sheet for Faraday's law of induction. What is missing from that equation that I assume <coughs> is not here, Miller? The number of turns. Then I'm going to put the number of turns just for yucks here. The number of turns in this particular case is one, which is why it doesn't really matter. But it was forgotten on several occasions on your test, so please be very careful of that, that n, the number of turns. Okay, we have b cosine theta. Let's walk our way through these. Uh, b is just b theta is the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field. What's the, the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field? Mr. P? How do you know? True. That's the direction of the area vector. The angle between the two is 180 degrees. So we have a cosine of 180 degrees. The area vector is out of the board. The uh, magnetic field is into the board. Uh, we then have the derivative of the area as a function of time. We'll define L as the distance between the two metal pieces here. So this is the derivative 
with respect to time of L times X. L is a constant, uh, let's bring it up here, and we have the EMF as a function of time is going to be equal to B, the cosine of 180 times negative one is positive, therefore we have B times L, that's a derivative of position as a function of time class, which is velocity, B, L, V. What is the name of this. Sometimes names are important, they come up nittish. Emotional EMF. Emotional EMF. 